Hey guys, I'm back with this week's video. <clears throat> How you guys been out there in La La Land? <laughs> um, uh, cheers. Oh, you remember the, the cup that Doug sent me? He's still on his uh, cross-country adventures. Uh, as you may know, in a previous video, I told you he's a semi-truck driver now. And he pretty much lives in his truck. I mean, it's got a bed in there. A uh, little refrigerator, I think. Um, my, I don't know if it a little TV, I believe. Uh, he showed me it once a few months ago. But he's pretty much up and down the middle of the country all the time, from Canada all the way to Texas. That's his uh, route at the moment. And I'm kind of coming at you late tonight because... We went to a concert, I and my girlfriend tonight. We went and seen uh, Alison Krauss and a gentleman named uh, David Gray. Now, I've always liked Alison Krauss. Um, here's her newest album. I, th I believe I've shared this in a previous uh, video. Um, I really enjoy her music. This one's Windy City. This is her latest release. And she played some songs from this as well as some of her other hits from over the years, including some songs that were in that movie, uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou, that was out uh, several years ago with uh, George Clooney. Very funny movie, go check that out if you haven't already. Uh, and this guy, I picked this up at the concert, and I haven't even opened it yet. It's uh, The Best of David Gray, and I never heard of the guy, although I did hear one or two of his songs before and I had no, no clue who it was um, but uh, he came on and he did like half of his show was acoustic and the other half was with instruments and whatnot and I, I really like Alison Krauss and him because their, their band is actually up there playing their instruments and the, all that this guy plays the, the uh, piano guitar um, I really uh, and enjoyed his mix. He had like a mixer pedal for his guitar or something. I don't know exactly how that works where he'll he'll play like a few notes and then he clicks I seen him clicking something with his foot and that note would keep playing and then he would play something else and then he would mix all these different uh, little notes together including his voice and it was a pretty uh, great show. David Gray and this is a gatefold. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, I was like, we got to get down there and get one of them albums because uh, it's going to take weeks if I have to mail off for it or something. I didn't know if my local record store had it. And it's actually not a gatefold. Or is it? I think it's just one of those. Um, yeah, I don't see any. Uh, what? Let me see here. Maybe I got it. It's just a very strangely thick cardboard, I guess. And what do we got on the inside? Ah, oh, just him lurking in an alleyway or something there, or peeping in somebody's window. I don't know what the hell is going on there, but uh, song lyrics. But yeah, this was a great show. Uh, next, I think I might already have this. This is Redbone, a uh, message from a drum. But every time I see a Redbone album in good shape, I grab it because they're just not all over the place at the moment. There they are there. Uh, they are all passed away now. Um, and if you remember, they had the, if you've seen Guardians of the Galaxy at the beginning of the movie, they play one of their songs called Come and Get Your Love. Um, and that kind of brought them back into the scene or notoriety for a little bit anyway it's on a, a soundtrack a newer movie soundtrack and actually i do believe these guys were more uh spanish or mexican than they were native american and they kind of what little they might have had they kind of ran with it and went with that image from what I understand, because the two Vegas brothers actually played mariachi and stuff like that when they first started, which is kind of 
crazy. <laughs> anyway, and uh, next we have the Rolling Stones. Uh, Stones now, mono. <clears throat> and this was about 10 bucks. And I just grabbed it. It's on a purple London label. And the guy at the record store thought maybe it was a, some kind of a misprint or something on the label because I don't know if it was its color or something of that nature. I just uh, can't recall at the moment. And next we have a couple of records by Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Now I always find these with the covers all tore up. <coughs> Excuse me. We got a bit, a bit of a scratchy throat tonight. Um, but the records are in really good shape on these. And I'm surprised that the covers are in decent condition. Although somebody wrote 68 on there. Must be the year. And on the record, it's got somebody's name label pasted on there. But Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Here's another one. Um take a ride uh, it must have been some sort of catalog number I don't think it was a year because there's a 45 on this one <laughs> let's see if it's the same lady yeah it's the same lady I won't say her name she might still be around somewhere wondering where her records disappear to <laughs> anyway uh, <laughs> That's that, Mitch Ryder and the Detroit Wheels. Now, I don't know, who, if you've never heard of them, I don't know who to uh, compare them to. I would say the early Rolling Stones. Let's just compare them to the early Rolling Stones. They kind of have that uh, rock bluesy type vibe. You know, they, they covered a whole bunch of songs just like the Rolling Stones did in the early years. And next, I, I bought these for three dollars. As you know, I I pick up I picked up some music sheets with some um, racial type uh, pictures or artwork on the front of them in the past. And I don't know how old these are, but they were three bucks for both of them. And I say, Mammy and Pappy. And <laughs> I don't know if they could get away with selling these nowadays. It would probably be a protest or somebody blocking the highway or something over a cup, couple of Mammy and Pappy shakers. But um, this is I just decided to add these to my collection because of the subject matter. Also, during these days, they made Native American ones, and they made them with giant noses and big pot bellies. I, I used to have some of those salt and pepper shakers, but um, I gave them to somebody. <laughs> uh, let's see, what do we got next? So next we're gonna look at some some more ink types, uh, writing type stuff. And here's a, this is a very fun glass pen. I just thought I would try it out. Uh, it's made by Herbin, J. Herbin Company. Uh, it's in France, I believe. But this pen is made in China. Another crazy thing. But this is a very fun uh, dipping fountain type pen. Uh, it's made of glass. And if you can see the end there, it has little swirls in it. And that's where the ink sits. And as you're writing, it moves down those little swirls until it's out. And then you dip it again. And... I was surprised at how smooth this is, and uh, I, I wrote about half a page before I had to uh, dip my ink again. Uh, obviously, you would not want to drop this on a hard surface, <laughs> or there goes your nice, pretty blue glass pen. But that's very fun. I enjoy writing with that. And here's some ink that I got just to try out with it. This is also by J. Herbin. And this is five little ink samples. And these ink samples are scented. They smell like flowers and stuff. Like this one smells like violets. 
and there's one that smells like roses, one that smells like apples, uh, orange blossom, and I, that, I just thought that was fun, just, you know, when I'm writing my little love notes, I can, you know, when she opens it, she'll get a smell of flowers. Uh, and that's that on that stuff. Next here, I have, you probably can't guess what this is, but it's a little printing press, actually. A miniature printing press. And can you guess what this was used to print for? <laughs> it was used to uh, print business cards. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure of the age, but it's pretty old. Um, I'm going to say somewhere in the 30s or 40s. It could be older. I'm not really sure because I haven't done a lot of research on it. And it came with uh, some uh, this little booklet, which is about eaten up by uh, mold, it looks like. It will pay you read all about your printing press. And this was made by the Looney Tunes Acme Printing Press Company. <laughs> no, actually it was made by a, a company called Acme in, in uh, New York. And like I said, I haven't researched it any, so I'm not exactly sure of the age on it yet, but it is old. And it came with a bunch of stuff. Uh, here's some uh, ink that's in there, which is just kind of, you know, does not any good anymore. It even has fingerprint ink inside of there. Different colors, really old stuff. And it came with lots of these little uh, extra, uh, the, the uh, rubber letters that go into the slots of the machine and spacers and a little screwdriver. Um, what, how it worked, I don't know if you can you see these two slots. That's where you would stick your rubber letters to spell whatever you wanted to spell. And then you would ink up this block and boom, they, oh, your, your card would go on this, this plate right here. I'm not sure how it attached to that just yet because I believe it's missing the, uh, however the card attached to the plate right here. But it has these little thingies which leads me to believe maybe it was small rubber bands or I, I'm, I'm, you know, I think I could probably do that. I, I, I bought it because I think it can be used, put to use again, since it used rubber stamps. Because this is just a uh, block of wood with rubber in here. And I can spell out the little, my name or whatever with the rubbers. <laughs> and, uh, um, get it going again. There's all these little, uh, compartments for the letters and whatnot. Uh, put that down for a second. And it had also some samples of cards that somebody made and it had some names in there that I'm not going to show it because those people might actually still be alive somewhere or their family still around. You know I don't want to be saying people's names on here. But uh, whatever this was, it says the pastime, a show for all, kids two, adults three cents. So, and it's, they were trying to make little, their own cards, I guess. And here's another one with the same stuff. And also it had this little bottle of gold embossing stuff with the cork in it and that's the video today it's a little shorter this camera's freaking me out again sorry guys uh colin over and out and weirdos unite